What's up everybody? I want to talk to you guys about something that's been bothering me for a while now. Uh, as most of you guys know, I'm a bus driver and uh, I get a chance to come in contact and talk to a lot of the youth out there today, especially our black youth. And what I've noticed is that our black youth are very misguided today. Our black youth between the ages of 16 and 25 are fucked up. They are completely fucked up. And from what I've heard and what I've seen uh, driving the bus and being able to interact and hear and speak with these youth is that they are misguided. They are misguided beyond comprehension right now. And, you know, I try to talk to them as much as possible to understand what they're going through. And a lot of them uh, don't know how to move forward in life, you know, so they sit stagnant in life. You know, they just sitting there, you know, and they don't have a clue as to uh, how to advance themselves in society today. You know, I'm going to give you guys an example. I'm going to tell you guys a story. And in this story, it's about uh, what well, is a true story. I have this young man that I've been picking up since he was four years old. You know, I've been driving the bus for 21 years now, and I was picking this young man up when he was in a baby stroller with his mom. I know his mom. I know him. I've never seen a father figure in this young man's life. So I usually come in contact with this young man probably once a year, you know, out, out you know, on, on various bus routes. And so I, I talked to him about six months ago, and... You know, I asked him, you know, what was he doing? You know, what, what are you into right now? And he said, nothing. And I said, well, you're working? He said, um, ain't nothing out there. Ain't nobody hiring. And right then and there, I knew he had given up. Because usually when somebody say that to me, that there are no jobs out there and that they have given up, you know, that's, that's what that's telling me, that, that they have given up when, when they say that no one's hiring. So after talking to this young man for a while, I quickly determined that he didn't know how to go about uh, looking for employment. Now, see, a lot of people take for granted the knowledge that they have. You know, you would assume that people, young men out there, know how to go about the, the, the employment process. They don't because you have to realize something in today's society, the way things are going right now, uh, a lot of those programs have been cut. Now, when I came up in high school, you know, uh, a lot of the stuff that they're taking right now, wild tech, you know, the, the electricians, the, the automotive, the construction, all that stuff that they spend $25,000 a year to do. We got that in high school for free. We had people coming out of high school certified welders. We had people coming out of high school with certified uh, uh, collision repair, auto repair, coming out of high school with this stuff, coming out of high school as contractors. They don't have those programs now. And they also don't have programs to teach kids how to go about applying for jobs and, and, and programs that would help them go to the next level in life. You know, we take that for granted because we had it. They don't have those programs now. You have to remember that. So in talking to this young man, you know, it took me, I, I took it upon myself to kind of adopt this young man because I've known him for, for so long, you know. And it took me all of about five hours over the period of three days to educate this young man on what it was going to take for him to find a job. And like I said, a lot of things that you think a motherfucker would know, a motherfucker don't know. They don't know. And you have to realize this. And so, you know, he'll get on the bus. You know, I get a lot of people get on the bus and they say, uh, what it take for me to become a bus driver? The first thing I tell them, stay your ass out of jail. You know, that's, that's what I call it my triangle, my employment triangle. This is my employment triangle, Okay. At the top of the triangle, the first thing, pass a piss test. If you could pass a piss test, that's the first part of the triangle. The second part of the triangle is have a valid driver's license. The third part 
of a triangle is to stay your ass out of jail. See how it go? Triangle. Stay your ass out of jail. All three of those have to work hand in hand. You can't be missing one. So in that employment triangle, you have to have a driver's license, stay your ass out of jail, and pass a drug test. That's what you have to do. So after I talked to the young man, he said he could do all of those. So I said, well, we could move on to the next step of trying to get employment. Now after that, you have to know how to look for employment. You have to know where to go. You have to know what to do. And he had no idea where to go or what to do to look for a job. And so I said, well, the first thing you want to do is probably go to the unemployment office. And I said, a lot of the colleges have uh, human resource boards uh, where they have listings of, uh, of jobs. You could do that. The newspaper, uh, the internet has a lot of uh, job listings. And the best one that I've always liked is word of mouth. Just keeping your ear to the street. Every job I've ever got uh, was word of mouth. I'll be standing in a post office and I hear somebody talking. Yeah, you know they're hiring over there. Ooh, you know, then I go there and I apply. But that's one of the ways you can learn. So after I talked to this young man about that, we was able to move forward. And after we moved forward, the next step was having the proper work docs now see i'm telling you you think people know this shit but they don't know it i'm telling you they do not know it so i said dude you're gonna need your your birth certificate copy of the birth certificate copy your social security card all your transcripts from school uh any cert certificates or any any anything that you got that'll help you get a job you got to have it and a copy of your driver's license and you're going to need some references. So you're going to need about two references where you know the address, the phone number, a friend, or auntie, a cousin. And you're going to need emergency contact. Now all of this stuff should be on you, on your persons. When you go to fill out an application, you should have all of this. Now when I used to be out there pounding on the street, going for a job, looking at whatever I was doing, I would have a mock application already set up. You know what I'm saying? So then that way... Um, I had all of that information right there on that application, you know, and another thing it was um, uh, filling out an a application properly, you know, that's one of the things you want to do, you know, it shouldn't be no misspelled words, the application should be complete all the way through, you know what I'm saying, and so that, those are some of the things that they do not know, and you would think that they know, but they do not know. You know, so now you got your documentation, you have your references, and you have your, your emergency contacts. Now you've the, now the application process itself, uh, as far as going to an, an establishment, a business, and asking for an application and turning in an application, you have to know when and how to do it. And see, this, like I said, another thing, this is some. They don't know. Now, I had to let this young man know that you have to be nice and you have to be courteous. And see, a lot of these youngsters, they, can, they mix it up. Nice and courteous on the streets means weak, you know? So if you tell them, you know, I'm gonna need you to be nice and courteous, a lot of me, man, fuck that, I ain't selling out, you motherfucker. Man, all you have to say, thank you. You have to say, have a nice day. You have to do all this type of stuff. But these youngsters, their mindsets is so fucked up, they think that being nice is being weak. You know, so it's hard for them to go into an establishment and be nice and be courteous and be professional and go in these establishments and ask for an application or ask even if, you know, if, if they're hiring at all, you know. So I went over that with him. And then another thing I talked to him about was times that you go, uh, to put in applications. You know, I said, well, one of the things you want to do is you're going to map out your day as far as how many applications you plan on putting in that day. And, you know, so you may say, I'm going to put in uh, 10 applications a day for a week. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, that's 50 applications. So you have to be prepared and you have to be ready. Now, you don't want to go to an establishment too early in the morning because a lot of these managers are opening up their businesses and their establishment and they don't want you in their face that early in the morning. So, 
a good time to go, turning applications will be 10 and 12. And you will stop at 12 because that's the lunch hour. Then you will pick it back up again at 1 o'clock. And from 1 to 4, you will hit it again. And you want to do research on the companies that you're going to, find out what kind of product they're selling. You want to find out... Uh, you know, the size of the company, because you may get interviewed and they may ask you something about their company. So you might want to know about all that stuff. So, you know, I, I, I ran it down to him like that, you know, and uh, I told him when you go into these businesses, you have to be neat. Now, my understanding of neat and your understanding of neat may be totally different. Now, see, I'm going to call him Billy. <laughs> Billy idea of neat was to put on a new white tee with some true religions in Georgia. See what I'm saying? Shit that you think a motherfucker would know, they don't know. So this particular young man, I had a pair of dress shoes. I, I, I gave him a pair of my dress shoes and I took him down to Burlington. I spun $40 on him, got him two pairs of slacks and two uh, white shirts. So now he had two shirts. He had some dress shoes, slacks, little belt, all that. I hooked him up, you know. Uh, you know, I told him he's going to have to pull the jury out. You know, he's going to have to, you know, may even have to take the earring out. Can't chew gum. Uh, don't put no candy in your mouth. It's going to leave, you know, a big red on your tongue, big red stain, all that. See, this is the little shit that I'm saying right now that they don't know. And this is basic application uh, uh, applying this basic this is the basic shit and he he had no clue you know he thinking he could go into people establishment dressed any kind of way you know however he wanted to but he couldn't do it now um uh after that i had to let him know you have to go by yourself man you can't be with all your partners in the car you can't do all that that, that you can't do that either man you know, when, you, when it comes to uh, applying for these jobs, you got to go by yourself. You know, that's, that's, that's not a good look when you're, when you're riding with a whole bunch of people. Now, we go through that process. Then we go through the interview process. So I had to let him know during the interview process, you have to be neat, Curtis. You go into the establishment. You state your name and your business. The people, most likely, they're going to sit you down, tell you where to go. When a manager comes out, he gonna, first thing he's going to say is, tell me about yourself. So you're going to have to be able to tell him about yourself briefly, to the point. He may ask you something about uh, your experience and, and whatever, whatever the job calls for. You know, you're going to have to be ready for that. Then you're going to shake the man's hand and you're going to leave the establishment. You're going to do a follow-up call in three to four days. You're going to do a follow-up just to see what's going on. And then after that, you just keep on moving on. But I took this challenge upon myself to talk to this young man <laughs> and to um, uh, mentor him in a sense. You know, it was just a challenge for me because I couldn't believe what I was seeing and what I'm hearing today. And I challenge you brothers out there uh, to take it upon yourself, man, to, to help these youngsters out here because they don't have the resources available to them like we had the resources available to us to find jobs and, and, and to prepare ourselves properly to get out there into that work world. You know what I'm saying? A lot of us didn't go to college and you know, a lot of us didn't have technical training, but many of us did have mentors and people uh, in our lives that, that, that would teach us and show us how to uh, move forward in life. So yeah, I'm challenging you brothers out there, man. I, I really need y'all to help these little young misguided youth out. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so that they can uh, move forward in life and, and, and live uh, a productive life and raise their families and all that type of stuff, you know. But this is your boy Marcus Mack, and I'm just letting y'all know, don't give up on these youngsters, man, because they did not have uh, the same opportunities that, that we had when we came up. So help these youngsters out, man. You know, buy the youngsters a shirt and, and some slacks and some shoes and, and show him how to uh, fill out an application properly, show him how to talk to the people properly, show him how to, uh, uh, you know, map out his, his day so he could go out and look for a job, you know. And like I said, the work triangle. 
That's right. Drug test, jail, and driver's license. You need all those to get a job. You may not get the job you want, but you will get a job. This your boy Marcus Mack. Love, peace, happiness. Marcus Mack.